you're just tuning in, we're asking what is the way forward for birthing a new Nigeria? Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. Or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-80384-663. And we still have Ola Kulishurian with us. Um, Lami, you, you wanted to ask a question before we went on a break. Okay, um, PK, you would agree with me that we have two enemies, the political class and the people down there. We want to, I don't want to say the names of masses and all that. I don't want to say that, but the people um, uh, at the, on the lower cadre. Yes. So now, so these are the two people. So we have to curry the favor of one of them, which should be the people. And we have just two years to do this. How do we achieve this in two years so that we can consolidate on the gains of this protest so that Great. it doesn't go to waste? What do we do? How do we do about it? How do we go about it? Great. So, um, first of all, I, I don't see those blocks as enemies. I see them as power blocks. Those are two power blocks. We have different power blocks in the country, right? That is two of them, right? And there are more. But how do we manage these power blocks? Um, the political class, today is not the day for that, but the political class is also operating at another level of um, pain and, and conditioning that makes it almost impossible for honest self-evaluation. They, they should be understood as well, you know? so that you don't you, you 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 must understand that there is a way we have to move but let me come down to the guys at the bottom of the triangle because i think they are the hot spot right now right mm -hmm. now there are some assumptions that we have to defeat first of all um we, we have to defeat that now like immediately so there are some immediate actions to take there are short-term actions to take and then there are long-term actions to take the immediate actions is one, we have to kill the idea of ageism. You see, mm -hmm. um, during the protest, a lot of bullying was going on. You know, young people were so assertive of their dominance and the change that they desire that any voice that is not within the bracket of youth must is like shut down, right? And you know, I saw a lot of seniors, I saw a lot of guys who had things to say, but were afraid, you know, of saying something and then have suffering a backlash. And the people not condemning them that they are supporting the government or all of that. They were just trying to bring a balance and there's a form of bullying. The bullying has been on for a while. It has to be defeated. The idea that young people can change the country. We have to nip that in the board. Right, and take that assumption out of the way. Otherwise, we'll keep leaving our best weapons, you know, um, away from the table, and all our swords on the table will always be incomplete. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that we need the young and the old running together. I'm not sure I gave that analysis yesterday, but I, 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 I think it is critical for young people to understand that young people have always ruled Nigeria. The guys who took over government in 1960, none of them was old. There was no old man in Nigerian political space in 1960. Everybody mm -hmm. were in their 20s, in their 30s, in max early 40s, right? So young people messed up the country. We should get it straight. It's not old people. The challenge is the young people who messed it up are still in the country. Now, I've seen foolish young men before in my life. Till today, I still very confident, foolish young men. Then I've seen very, I've seen very confident, wise young men as well. I've seen foolish young men. I've seen foolish wise men. I've seen foolish old men. I've seen terribly distracted old men. And I've seen wise old men as well. So we don't need young people. And we don't need old people. We need wise people. people. We need people with heads on their shoulders. The young and the old running together, right? No name boys and girls, men and women with capacity. We need capacity on the table. 
right, for Nigeria to change. And that is very important. The only reason why I feel young people should be in front, though, I don't think old people should be in front, is because the minority cannot be in front in a land that is predominantly occupied by a young majority. Mm -hmm. So if 70% or more of the population are young people, they should represent the country. They should be in front. But the young people should know that their war room and their you know, arsenal, you know, their wisdom table, should have the right representation of people whose head, whose body may be tired, mm -hmm and whose body may fail the test of youth, but whose mind passed the test of clarity, wisdom, and intelligence. Those people need to be identified and to be brought into the room from the back, right? And let the guys in front be young and, and operate. I think there's a place for that. And like somebody opined, I think that really anybody between that is above 60 now should be content with the fact that his generation has done their best. Some of them have been miserable and some have been amazing, but they should be content with sitting at the back and let front young people stay in front. Okay, but so young people should also be aware that being in front is not necessarily creating victory and they need to get the right people behind as well. Okay. I think that is a critical defeat. Again, a, a critical reality to, to defeat, right? then we now need to move beyond that as well. And then change agents must ask themselves, what do you really want? If you look at the last election, you have young people, Shuwore, um, Kinsley Mogadu, Feladro Toye, and some people, um, Madame Obix, and a lot of people who were supposed to be the voice of the youth. They couldn't even agree to have one front. They divided their own votes, right? There was too much infighting amongst the so-called youth energy that they couldn't even agree. We have to defeat that because what I see is a lot of ambition. You know, when you create change for a generation, you must, you must also be prepared to see, to have that change occur without you necessarily being alive or being in the front of it. Thank the you. change is the overriding instrument, and Perfect. that is critical. Mm -hmm. What I see is a lot of voices, even during the protest, there was infighting amongst a lot of young people. Mm. Infighting amongst young people. Guys were fired. You can't take over the leadership. You can't be this. People are trying to represent us. We don't need this. We don't need that. You know, And all of that was going on. So young people themselves, change agents need to ask themselves, what do we want? Am I looking for a change? to the extent that that change must have my name in it, or do I need change to occur, whether I'm alive in it or not? And if that is true, then our plans have to be more long-term. And we have to, because what cannot be done in, in two years cannot be done in two years. Absolutely. You can't I was make gonna... a child drive, no matter how much you love him. At the age of two, he can yeah. never drive. PK, I no was matter who say... is supporting the child. Yeah, PK. The child has to grow to a level before he can drive. Mm. So I think that is also critical. Then if we move away from that, in the immediate, young people now use that. PK. Okay, I think you have entered the, the energy zone again, um, because that was the question I was going to ask that why, why this urgency, you know, is it that because we are in a social media age, in um, a microwave age where everything is like two minutes, that is why we're seeing that this sense of urgency that we're thinking in our head that this change must come in our time, you know, so you hit the nail on the butt. I want you to harp on it more because... I, I see that this is the same error that we're making, thinking that, oh, because I went out on the street, my voice has been heard, it means that the solution is here. Let me just say something about, oh, at least two years, so that we don't, we don't um, lose what we have gained from the protest. Did we really gain from this protest? So, first of all, we gained from this process, from this protest. We didn't, the, Nigeria did not lose in this process. That I can tell you for free. This protest is probably the most successful in the history of the nation. Mm -hmm. It has delivered things that are tangible and a lot of its success is still intangible. As we move into the future and we count time, we are gonna to begin to appreciate how devastating it is and how progressive it is. 
a lot of time will reveal all of that. So um, I believe very strongly that the, the protest is a success already. Nigeria will never be the same on many levels. Absolutely. Having said that, you know, the truth is by 2023, we cannot do too much. No matter the, the you know, if any, I mean, see, I'm not a magician. And I know that magic is an illusion. It is branded illusion. That's what magic is. You know, mm -hmm. so I really don't see how, you know, Nigeria will realize its entire destiny and the weight of its potential by 2023. But we can gain some grounds in 2023, mm -hmm. right? Even if all old people die in Nigeria today and young people fill up the position, we still have complexities to deal with, right? If in 2023 there's a political party called Youth Movement and it's filled with 30-something-year-olds and young people, it will not take all our problems away, mm -hmm. but it will be a good start. Can that happen in 2023? Maybe. But this is what I think. I think we need to humble ourselves. I think change agents and change visionaries need that honest self-evaluation to really ask themselves if they are really driven by a vision or by an ambition. ambition. Because when I relate, and a lot of these ambitions are inordinate and impractical. Mm -hmm. You know, people think that Nigeria can become like the United States by 2021, by 2023. Mm -hmm. I've seen all kinds of vision, vision 2020, 1990, all kinds of things have gone on. You know, people are naive in their estimation of the character of change, right? I think that we should be clear about what we really want. And I insist and I say it again, people should take themselves out of their way. There are too many people in the way. And they should be um, honest with themselves. And the people following should also be alert to interpret what they are seeing. Is this ambition? Is this because there is a sense in which efforts can create popularity? Since 1960 till now, our so called nationalists, our freedom fighters, our civil, civil rights activists, right, have been fighting the same issues. What the people wanted in 1960 is what they still want now. In fact, it has gone worse. But the lives of their nationalists are better. The lawyers have more briefs. The, the, the leaders of their so-called freedom fighting are more popular. They have more attention. They have more resources. They have more followership. Um, they have more business. 60 years is long enough for us to begin to even question anybody saying, I'm leading change. Because... PK, <laughs> they have to be bringing that because you, you know, you're not hearing me. Um, so Jerry Odia from YouTube says, we, can you hear me? We gained from the protests. The question rather is how well can we sustain the, the new youth focus? We must, stop talking, we must not stop talking about it. That's uh, someone from YouTube that we gained from the protest, but how well can we sustain it? Because we're running out of time. We want to just get yeah. in more comments from our audience quickly. So because of time, I think that what is critical now is mobilization. We need to form one voice that is conscious, trained, right? I think a lot of young people need to be recruited into a curriculum across the nation, taught, and... Um, and some of them just don't have to speak the best of English. We have those that we speak English. We should have those that speak good pidgin. We should have those that speak good Yoruba, those that speak Igbo, those that speak Hausa, those that speak uh, um, Ishan, you know, Ijebu, um, Ondo dialect, right? We need all of these people into a curriculum that is represented across those languages as well. And this curriculum is talking to the issues that matter the most. The idea about GDP, about per capita income, about jobs, right? About voting, about election. I believe in PVC, it has its place, but I believe party administration is superior to voting because party administration creates the options. Voting okay. is so weak that it only make a choice between available options. Mm -hmm. And power blocks understand that at times, so they before give you us, go and consult they give us the, the votes, options. Consult yeah. the options. If you manipulate the options and you present two fools, 
you have weakened the vote because mm -hmm. the vote will be making a choice between two fools. Absolutely. So we have to think about party administration as well mm. and how to engage. Okay. Because all of these blocks are all different power centers that we need to make plans for and go from community to community. I'm telling people in my network, go to your community, form a group of people, find something you can do for old people and talk to them. Talk to young people, challenge them. It doesn't have to be sophisticated. It doesn't have to be awesome, but I made a post about two days ago or yesterday or something, and I encourage everybody with the video. I said, with this video, learn it, understand it, ask me a question, whatever you want to ask me, create a curriculum, but most importantly, go to your community and sell this type of thinking. Sell, sell this type of understanding. It has to be one-to-one. -one. We have to move in that number, right? And I think if we do that between now and 2023, we can achieve a lot. We okay. also need to begin to create a database of change, right? We need to begin to lock in emails and lock in phone numbers. But that also needs to be managed because some evil forces may be looking for that number as well to target people. <laughs> but we have to get conscious about all of that. Okay, yeah. so um, Chisom says, um, Lami and Isi, you take your own as well. Chisom says the government must just simply carry out its primary responsibility as it is freely done in the Western world. Also, education should be all-encompassing. Guys, we must talk to the government. They have to wake up. Thanks very much, Chisom. I, I'm sure you're listening to PK. He will tell you that the work is more for on us than government. Isi, take your comments, please, quickly. Okay, my comment goes first. Um, this is Tobechuku uh, from Lagos. He says, I will hold the president uh, slash presidency responsible. He chose his team and the wrong people, and he did monitor the process with his team. The daughter should shut up. What has she done ah. before now as okay, a member so of the, the first the family? Palliative. Lami. What's your take on that? Lami, quickly. Let well, Lami uh, take her own. Okay. Should, should okay. I respond? Or we Lami, wait no, for... let Lami take her. Let's wait for uh, Lami, please. Okay. Thank okay. You. A true champion wins for others. He is not driven by the bottom pot mentality. When most of us were, were sorry, when most of us were small, I don't understand what you're saying there anyway. We're small, we worked hard. When most of us were small, we worked hard. Wow. Okay, when some of us, when most of us were small, we worked hard for mom. For mom is service, but not for. But okay, I think it's, it's, it's a bit muddled up. So someone is asking a question. Jolly, hold on, Uwa. Mm. But for the jolly rice bottom pot, the best of the best. This is called sincerity and selflessness. Lack of it breeds distrust. This should be the new Nigerian mentality. Tobe Chuku in Zeku from Lagos. And Rosalind is asking, you. please, how do you ask your speaker, how do you deal with the spirit of greed? So, PK, in one minute, please. <laughs> so, um, I have, I've lost the first question, the very first question. No, go ahead. The very, go first ahead. One, the, first, the very first one was about um, the daughter of Buhari saying that... Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Was, yeah. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. I, I get it. I, I don't okay. think that we should that, get that personal. You know, um, Buhari's daughter is, was not elected mm -hmm. and she has a right to her view. You know, we shouldn't do that. You know, I believe in the That's sanctity true. of the family and the dignity of it. So I'm not going to be part of that. Um, she has a right to make a choice. But what I want to say to people critically is we have to now understand that the government, you know, is there as a power block. The idea that our experiences must be curated from Astro Rock every time and government offices is, is incomplete. It is true. But what it does, it, it, it makes um, OR, the word that OR, or oppressive. We don't need the government, you know, alone. It's not an independent vehicle. I think we now need what is called the genius of the ant. We must hold the government responsible for all that it must do. And we must hold ourselves responsible for all that we have to do. And what we have to do is by far more powerful. Why? Because when we do, the government has no choice but to do. But when do. we don't do, we empower the ignorance of the government to put something, yes, to put nothing as something on the table. But when we do, we raise the bar. 
and we define minimum level of behavior for the government. So we have to do, and I think that is very, very critical. Again, in moving forward, in moving forward, we have to push a bit to begin to um, mobilize, like I said, across different blocks. The diaspora is another constituency we have not even gotten to here. We need to think about the diaspora as well and bring everybody on one single power table, you know. But when we begin to operate like that and think from that level, we can create a lot of value. 2023 seems far, but it's so close. Again, I want to challenge everyone on social media. The protest is still on. The protest is still on. And they should continue to tweet and all the government responsible for the demands of the protest for the reform of the police force, for end to police brutality, for end to SARS. And we should continue to do that. We are in a borderless world. Physical meeting has been disrupted. That is why I could be talking to you from Dallas. We don't need to sit in the room. Re negotiation can be borderless. And so we should continue to make the demands. The spirit of the protest started online. Online can keep it going. We should stay there and keep having the conversation. Keep talking about it okay. and make it to continue to trend, right? So that the government and the world can continue to know what issues are that affect the peace and harmony of the Nigerian people. Thank I you think so that much. is critical. Thank you so much, yeah. PK. So let me quickly take two more comments on YouTube because this, today is the first time we're actually going on YouTube. At the moment, additional David says, we need to understand protest doesn't change anything, but mobilize thoughts, then we should channel the agitation and thoughts uh, and inform reforms. Then Femi Ojo says, I believe there's urgent need for us to uh, for us to have a forum where we can come together to actualize those goals. Um, great job, guys. That's from Odia. We need to approve uh, of selected TV and radio channels that are not politically influenced. Well, we are not. And Daddy says, um, Collie's Daddy says, what can we do? What can we do to some of the youth that is being used by the government. That one will be another conversation for another day. But thank you so much, um, PK, for your time. I just want to say that for everyone that is out there, um, we have to we have to be, especially the ones that are enlightened. We have to be the ones to continue to push positive thoughts. You know, we have to push positive thoughts, positive actions. We should not be amongst those fueling um, what's it called negative behavior and applauding them because when it implodes, we all will be affected. Thank you so much, PK. Thank you, ladies, for doing this with me. Now, please watch Thank a repeat you. broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m. It's been a very insightful conversation. And keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at We Show Africa or at Plus TV Africa as we continue to hear what you are saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Good governance never depends upon law, but upon the pa uh, personal qualities of those who govern. The machinery of government is always subordinate to the will of those who administer that machinery. So the most important element of government, therefore, is the method of choosing the leader. And PK rightly said, it is not about the choice. It is about going into the administra administration of those political structures. So you can be the ones to determine the options for elections. So we'll see you live on Friday as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy your evening.